Hello, this is Mrs. Russo, and I'm going to talk about some of the last few chapters of Chapter 2, and they are multiply, multiplying using the regrouping method. Well, we have been teaching them about partial products. So normally when we gave this problem 453 times 4, we would have students draw three arrows, and then they would show me that the first arrow is 4 times 3, the second arrow is not just 4 times 5, it's 4 times 50 because that is that value. And the last arrow would be 4 times 400. So partial products works where you find part of each product and then we add it together in the end. 4 times 3 is 12. We can box an underline. So 4 times 5 is 20 with a 0. And then I could box an underline to keep track of my zeros. 4 times 4 is 16 with two zeros. And now I would add all my part, parts of my products or partial products together. And I get the answer of 1,812. Now we're going into regrouping. Be excited. That's the way that we kind of learned how to do multiplication. But now learning this method of regrouping... Um, and it's called that because you're multiplying and you're kind of adding as you go. So instead of adding at the end, like in partial products, we're kind of adding as we go. I try to show the students that it takes up way less space. But now the numbers that we might be putting at the top now have meaning because we learned how to do regrouping. For example, when I do 4 times 3, I still get 12. I put the 2 below and I put the 1 above. Well, they might ask, why do you put the one above? Well, I can go over and look to what we did earlier and say, well, I still need to read 12. Does it still read 12? Yes. Now I go 4 times 5 is 20. Add my 1 to get 21. Well, now I can look. Did I add 20 plus 1 in that same exact place in our problem earlier? Yes, now I'm adding as I go. Now I'm going to do 4 times 4, 16 plus 2, 18. So I get the same product as my final answer. But now look, we did 16 times 4 later on. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 2. So now regrouping holds a lot more meaning because we can go back and show them what those carryovers mean and why we're adding as we go to save time but now the kids kind of understand the process because of all the steps we've taken up till then. I am going to just do one more example in case I was unclear on the previous problem. So we're going to solve this one using partial products and we're going to solve this one using regrouping and show you how they relate. I look at if this is a three digit number and you draw three arrows and then write down what I'm multiplying each. Five times three, five times sixty because the value of this six is six tens and then five times five hundred because I have five hundreds. Then I'll go through and find out all my partial products and then add them together at the very end because that's the method. So I get 2,815. Now I'm going to solve using regrouping. I'm still going to start off like I am right here and do 5 times 3. But instead of dropping it down, I'm going to carry it over so I can add it into my next step and already get this part out of the way. 5 times 3 is 30 plus 1 is 31. Put down the 1, carry over the 3. And we can look and see we do have a 1 down there below. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 3, 26, 27, 28, using our touch points. So the kids are super happy that this method is much faster, but now the kids are learning it quicker because of learning how to do expanded form and partial products. Please let me know if you have any questions, and thank you very much for watching.